Welcome to Face the Facts. I am Nick Face. It's great to be with you once again. We have another great episode planned. Do we, though? We do have a great... Whether you like yeah. it or not, we no, do. That's, I will agree with Tom. It's pretty presumptuous. We, we pretty great. have... All four teams need to be talked about today. So everybody's going to get about 15 or so minutes. Maybe some need a little bit more, but general gist of it is everyone's going to have their, uh, their segment today. Every, a lot of things to cover. But I want to introduce our, our lovely guests like we always do. Tom Smith here in the center. Still like that center uh, chair, don't you? Uh, it's you know it's the hot seat. It su suits you well. It's the hot seat, yeah. You know I get all the full of view of everything. And we have Phil Healy, our program coordinator here at Norcam, back in the Phil Healy chair. Mm -hmm. I want to lead it off though first today with with the NFL free agency. There's been a lot of movement going on, whether it's from new players signing with teams or with trades or even speculation on things, but because we like gossip sometimes. Yeah, sometimes gossip turns into, well, problems, but uh -huh. sometimes it turns into real stories. Yeah. So I want to start with the Patriots because the Patriots had their, had, had the free agency has begun. The Patriots have, were really kind of quiet the past couple days, but there are some signings that we want to talk about and a trade that has happened too. Um, the first piece of information we want to share with you is the Patriots have traded for Michael Bennett, who is a member of the Seattle Seahawks for many years, and he is going to be one of the upfront uglies on defense. Yeah, suits him. So suits his role pretty well. well. We know how you. Do feel. you have an opinion on him? Just by yeah, no, what do you I, think? I, I like the Bennett brothers. You like the Bennett, uh, the Bash they're, brothers. The they're Bash up, brother they're up and down with something. He had some uh, kind of unfavorable things he's done as far as like pushing some guy in a wheelchair. Apparently. Um, He's not There's the, uh, what's the word? Oh, the nicest? Maybe not the nice, but he doesn't have the greatest, I'd say, reputation oh, okay. in the league. Maybe that's the word. Oh, no, too. yeah, and I don't even know as far as I can throw it for that. Like, But I enjoy, as a player, I think he hasn't really slowed down. He's 34, is he? Like, he's up there, right? He's up, 33? 33. 33. Sounds about right, yeah. So, I mean, yeah, he, like, yeah. it's an old team. So it's Older like, than me. So. I liked it if they, well, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but, you know, the difference is you've slowed down. Yeah, it's slowed down. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you're, not, you're also not like a 300-plus uh, pound black man who's pushing around not other yet. people. That's true. Give it time. I was like, in this day and age, you can do it. You can do it. But, uh, you no, can I, do it. Uh, yeah. No, I agree. It's an awesome. I wish we would have kept, like, it, you just said off air that we lost nothing. Yeah, we've, lo we've lost some players. Well, he didn't that die. Part he went to another team. No, he, no he died. Players. But maybe when they it go to these scenario, teams, they though. will. It depends on that. Um, Their skill set, maybe. We have Trent Brown is now a member of the Raiders. Malcolm, Malcolm, or, no, um, Raiders. We've lost we Malcolm Brown, Brown now to the New Both Orleans Browns. Saints. Trey Flowers is now a member of the Detroit Lions. That was a hard one. That was that a was big a hard loss. One. And you have, um, not that he was on the team last year, but Danny Amendola is a member of the Lions now. Another wow. player the Patriots were reports, interested in. Reports said that Amendola wanted to come back. He did. But, but he... Do he they had, not have the money? Is that he, the... he chirped too much about Belichick. Remember that yeah. Mike Reese interview he did yeah, in the car sure, sure. when yeah. he was on his way, I think, to Merrimack College, and he oh, was just that? like, yeah. well, it wasn't fun here. You know, Bill is Bill, and we, we, we didn't really I yeah. jive we, well together. I think we talked about that a little bit the last show. But he, honestly, he's like, a, you know... He's 35 years old. But also, like, he earned his stripes here. No one can say he didn't, like, play... Uh, he earned his He has a place in Patriot history. Yeah, sure. I, I, yeah, definitely. Sure does. Dollar. Yeah, yeah. On the Michael Bennett front, I personally just want to throw out a gripe of mine because oh, yeah. I love to do that. We have a oh, lot of yeah. facts we like, like to face like here to and face the, the fact. Show, Here's on one the of the show. facts, yeah. folks. Whether you like it or not, this is one of the big protesters there is in the NFL who takes a knee when the national anthem is done, goes in the locker room, has a little hissy fit about everything, and then comes out to the field to play. Doesn't sit well with me. All right, I've had a lot of family members that have represented the country um, through through fighting for our freedom from sure, everything. Sure. And you know what? When I look at that flag, whether you believe in it or not, you stand up. That's how I feel. You post if we hear any kind of um, other info on the Malcolm Patriots. Malcolm Brown, front. that hits hard. Like that both, does. Uh, Malcolm both. Brown draft, and Trey Flowers. Flowers. It was, yeah. And Flow yeah, Flowers and Malcolm Brown were... And Isaiah Wynn is the one who was hurt. They were big So they're going to they're, they're gonna be leaning on the Isaiah Wynn from the last draft they for will. next year, too. Uh, we want to close the chapter there with football. We want to change our gears to the black and gold. So, Phil, you can have a nap. No, I'm kidding. Yeah, no, that's fine. <laughs> I just put on my... Sleep. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know when the last time it was we saw you, cap. but I don't think it's been recent. Recently, Two and weeks we, ago. we need to talk it about the, the Boston Bruins. Was, yeah. 19 consecutive point streak they had, which 
was one of their longest ever That's in crazy. franchise yeah. history. They, um, yeah, because last year just, was ten. Month of February, they didn't lose in regulation. Wow. Had no losses in regulation. They had two in overtime. And they go halfway through March, almost halfway through March, without losing one. Correct. But we do have to say that the Bruins in the past two games, at least recently, have looked like a team <laughs> that needs to get healthy. They are missing some big bodies and some names. Oh, yeah, didn't a couple past weeks. They've right? survived yeah. really little, without yeah. Pasternak for a while, but now it's catching up to them. Okay, David Pasternak has been out. He has the broken thumb from his... His whatever fall. his oh, fall yeah. <laughs> his stumble yeah. at 11:30 at night somewhere so mm-hmm. hopefully that thumb is healing up so they can yeah, get him he's back gonna be, he's so on track thumb? he's on track to be coming right thumb i thought it was the ankle no, no the right thumb, thumb. Wait, how does that happen I or like the, i'm just talking the physics of it i think somebody missed the step after the yeah, drink i mean i guess but the thumb They're is the first thing to go the hmm. player that has been missed severely is jacob debrusque am i correct mm-hmm. on that mm-hmm. okay We've seen a different player ever since he came back healthy, which was about a month into when this point streak was there. I have to credit DeBrusque with one of the key players on why that point streak was as long as it went. Do you agree on that? Absolutely. Okay. I think, I think him being out really hurt them, especially in the game against Columbus. Yep, I do too. The Bruins lost, just so you know, it's against Pittsburgh by a score of 4-2. to two. They had a minute to go and it was 3-2. to two. They just got back into it. So it made it a little interesting. Bruins pulled the goalie. That's when Pittsburgh delivered the empty net goal. So that was the sign sealed delivered uh, win for Pittsburgh there. I was very, very surprised on how lethargic, not focused, no energy, well, they stupidity moves that were made both, against the Blue both. Jackets. Oh, against the Blue Jays. Yeah, yes. that was a terrible game. I shut that one off after the first period. First period, the Bruins were down 3-1. to one. It shouldn't have been 3-1. to one. It should have been 2-2, two, two, but they missed a couple shots that were on net. They missed four chances, four wide open They were so sloppy. Oh, the wow, defense, really? I don't really blame so much of Tuka on it. Tuka was in net. He got pulled. I look at Krug as one of the people that was just turnover after turnover. A lot of turnovers in the defensive zone. I think they're just exhausted. Zone. I mean, that's the kind no of... No excuse on, for that, though. They're professional <laughs> athletes. Well, no I mean, excuse. just on... Some, you know, there's got to be a leg. Well, no, not on, not on, not not for that game. Against yeah. Pittsburgh, yes, but okay. they put. it seemed like they put a lot more... I mean, I wasn't able to watch the game because I was at the airport, but yeah. they put seemed to put in a lot more effort against Pittsburgh than they did Columbus. Oh, yep. fair enough. Um it's, it's got to change. And a, a, one of the other factors is Kevin Miller is out on defense. Grizzlick's out on defense. You also have Marcus Johansson, who's out for the Bruins, a player that they signed and then got hurt very quickly. Three games in. Three games in. Um, they got to get more solid there. The one yeah. player I will say yeah. that I am very, very happy with on the season that he is having, I think you know who I'm going to say, is Chris Wagner. Chris Wagner was signed for 500 k to start the season, and he has been a force on that third and fourth line. He's coming back and forth a couple times from it, but very, very happy with him. Big, big names from the trade deadline, or since the trade deadline, have been um, their acquisition with Charlie Coyle. Yep. He's, been a big, he's been a big part of the team. See, I, I, I disagree with that. I, I think Charlie Coyle's been absolutely crap since he's been here. All right. I don't crap. Know. Now I'm just going to say it with my popcorn. He hasn't done crap. He doesn't have to score or assist. He makes good plays. What's he done? He's made good plays to get the puck out of the zone, get the puck deep into the offensive zone. Um, yeah. I mean, so what if he hasn't gone in his – he's gone in, uh, I think, two assists? I, I'm just – I'm on the Billy Jaffe front with him. Billy Jaffe has been critical of him. I'm going to stay critical of him because they gave up Donato. Whether he was doing good or not in Providence or whatnot, Donato could put the puck in the net. Coyle's got to show us that he can put the puck in the net or at least set up passes. Maybe it has to do with him playing with Bacchus on that third line in the Providence Bruin Express yeah, line that, on that, whoever's going to be on the, that doesn't the wing. Help. That but, doesn't help. Bacchus has been a shell of himself. I will say since he's become more of the enforcer type, he's been better. Yeah, he scored two goals uh, since getting uh, since getting two fighting majors. Um, but, yeah, Jake DeBrus, I mean, there have been a couple games where Charlie Coyle hasn't looked that great, but he yeah. has. There are games where he has looked good. And then I'm Chris, by no means giving up on him. I don't want you to think that, but I, I expect more. Right. No, we. I mean, we all do. He, he's a scorer, but, you know, when you're – 
playing alongside a 35 year old who can't skate quickly. No, <laughs> it's not. I mean, it's not gonna look. You're not gonna look good. That may be one of the worst contracts that's been given out of, for a Boston sports athlete in the past 10 years. So, Bacchus's contract. So here's five years, 30 million. Here's for gave, a hockey player. And we gave up. And we gave up on who went to Vancouver. What was his name? Louis Erickson. Oh, yeah. That's Erickson. who replaced Louis Erickson from that. Not that he was. He wasn't looking too good. He's either. not looking too good either, but that money could have been used in a whole lot of other different ways, I'll tell you that. Well, here's my theory. I mean, it's if you look at it, you had Bacchus playing with Alexander Steen when he was in St. Louis, and Bacchus was a phenomenal player when he was in St. Louis. Mm -hmm. Then you split up the pair, and I mean, Alex Steen isn't looking that great now either, but. You know, Bacchus comes into Boston, doesn't do much. Then you go over to Anaheim, where we got <coughs> Matt Bolesky. Yeah. And he was playing with uh, Jacob Silverberg, and yep. he was looking good with Silverberg, and then he comes <coughs> over to Boston, doesn't do a lot either. So, I mean, when you split up a good pair that looks, you know, both players are looking good, it, it's for a reason. Like, Do you think once Passionate comes back and DeBrusque and everything kind of settles in like it should, do you think they're going to be looking better than they are right now? It's it's gonna be a tough job for Cassidy to see who goes into the lineup. Yep. I mean, what do you you got Marcus Johansson who could play on the second line or the third line. Yep. You got Jacob DeBrusque who could play on the second line or the third line, and you have Pasternak who could play on the first line or the second line. But I would prefer to put him on the second line. So then, where do you put? Where now do you let's put, go positive because we've been talking kind of the negative on the injuries and all that stuff. I have three players that deserve a lot of praise for reasons why that streak was so long and when it was. My number one person, actually my first two, of course, it's Bergeron and Marchand. Okay? Those two guys right now are just on another planet. They're so together. If one looks to pass, one puts it in the net. Marchand has absolutely elevated his game in the second half of the season. Do you agree on that? Yeah, I mean, it was a slow go to the start of the it season. It was a slow but, go. Um, I mean, it was that was kind of expected too. Yep. Uh, but you know, he looks awesome. But awesome you, with Bergeron but, right but now. But you, but you know, you know, they're gonna start going on a tear sooner oh, or later. Yeah, and they have been. And they chose a good time to do it. Those are your trusted guys that will deliver it week, uh, day in and day out, with most likely trying to put the puck in the net. Both are just about at thirty, if not at thirty goals already on the season. Actually. Marshan already is at 30. Marshan is. Yeah. Bergeron's only at 26 or 27. But they'll both be there. There's mm -hmm. no doubt about it. The player who I have criticized time in and time out and who has uh, been who absolutely it? awesome this season is David Krejci. Where is this team right now without the play of David Krejci? Well, um, not where they are right now, I no. have to say. And I think it's a, big, a shock to me. I think a big At big the top of the conference. That, I don't know. It should my be. only contribution. At, at, I think a big key to that was uh, the way DeBrusque started playing after Pasenak went down. Yeah. Um, but, you know, as we say on the show, you criticize the player, they start doing better. <laughs> yeah, get to it. <laughs> Roll down and get down the David line. Backus, you stink. <laughs> you stink. You should be sat. Okay, let's see what happens. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the seat is sown. Public record now. Yeah. It's out there. I've said it. Yeah. Who That's knows? It. When everybody comes back healthy, he might get benched. I think he will because he's been a healthy scratch a few times. If who, not, yeah, who are they with? They're Pasternak and who else? Uh, Pasternak, Marcus Johansson, uh, and Jake DeBrusque are all out. And Kevin out right Miller now. is also out on and defense Kevin Miller with and Grizzlick. Matt Grizzlick. Yep. And, I mean, that's another thing. Oh, man. Kevin Miller was having a good year on defense. Matt Grizzlick was starting to have a good season. Yeah. Brandon Carlos had a really pretty, good season. Pretty good season. Yeah. I mean, he's yeah. made a few Mistakes. Uh, turnovers that shouldn't have gone, but. Yeah, I We mean, talked about this, Tom and I, off air, and we were exchanging some texts on Tuesday from the Columbus game. And who was the one player I was very critical of? I, sh I said he should be thrown off the ice. Oh, Tory Krug. Krug. Yeah, Tory Tory Krug. Krug. Oh, really? What, really has regressed this year. Really regressed. And I don't know if that's because of so many – because the, it could be partly because he's had to change so many defensive pairs. Might be. Um, because Ke he was playing with Kevin Miller before he went down, and then he came back and then went down again. And then he was, I think he was playing with Grizzlick. And I think he was. Grizzlick got hurt. So I put Chara and I put John Moore ahead of Tory Krug right now. Is that accurate? Oh, yeah. Okay. I, a lot, I've heard a lot of, I, I know a lot of people that aren't big fans of John Moore, but he's been playing pretty well the yep. past few games. 
Um, that was their and, that was their signing that they had at the beginning of this season. So he's new. He had a I think he has a five year deal, four year deal, something like that. Something good. I mean, oh, he's, they're giving out five year deals. But it, it was on the cheap. It's uh, like five years for like. It's easier to give a longer term deal in the NHL for it cheap is. than for it is for. Than it's, it's, it's nothing yeah. like baseball, basketball, football the with these year. absurd contracts. Yeah, it, it always seems hockey is on the level as far as like they haven't broached that like multi crazy million because they're dollars. the ones that are the most physical out of it. Yeah. Yeah, it just doesn't make the money, just doesn't make the TV money that they want. No, no. But moral of the story here, folks, is the Bruins, again, healthy, get ready for the playoffs, and hopefully they can go in on a high note because you don't want to go high, low, go into the playoffs, and be done. It's looking like Montreal is the first, not Montreal, Toronto is the first round. Because what's the seeding right now? Tampa? We're the two, right? They're still in second in the division right now, but and Toronto's been on a downhill slide too, so... Hopefully, it no looks like no one's catching. Uh, no Tampa. one's catching Tampa. No yeah, one's catching Tampa, and they I mean, like the next, the, the next point. closest team to the Bruins are the the Maple Leafs. So after that, it's it's uh. on a good piece of information about how the season wraps up. It's good that we still have two games to go with Tampa, because that's a team that you're most likely going to have to play in the second, third round, whatever it is, to get to the Cup, and you have to beat this team. The good thing is the Bruins have. Over the years, pretty much kind of had Tampa's number a bit. So I'm not as concerned with, oh, Tampa's the big bad bully out there. They can take them. I'm more looking at that, can we get by Toronto? Because they have the youth on their side. That's what's kind of scaring me a little bit. I'm not worried. You're not worried about the Toronto? No, I'm not worried. I'm not worried about Toronto. I'm not really too worried about Tampa. I mean, both, I, I would say if we get... Toronto first round, it's probably going to go six or seven, and if we get to, uh, and then if we play Tampa in the second round, it would probably go seven. But are the Bruins Stanley Cup caliber? Yeah. Okay. You hit her here first. I agree with it. Yeah. You agree? I mean, uh, even no after dice. even after that Columbus game, I mean, you you asked me if they had a chance of making it back, and what did I tell you? No. I, I saw them live. <laughs> I saw Blue, the Blue Jackets live, and I know how they can play, and I, I didn't the think The Bruins were down, just so you know, to bring you up to speed. 5-1 no. to one in the second period, and they got it to 5-4. to four I saw in the to third. To close out the third. I was telling Tom I was in a bar. They got it close. Then. If they had showed up in that first period, that was a very winnable game. Yeah. Well, so here's one question, like, just in general. So do you feel like the, it's wide open, the NHL is wide open, there's no lockdown favorite? I would still say my money would be on Tampa, on Tampa right now. Or even out of the West. Tam- Tampa and San Jose are the two favorites right now. But do you think they, they can they have beaten? They have the highest chance of making it to the Stanley Cup Finals. You wouldn't put Calgary in that conversation? There's a, a thing on an account on Instagram for, like, uh, sports betting, and I'm not so, I'm not soliciting sports betting, <laughs> and I'm not saying that you this should do it. Today. You heard I mean, it here first. Got, got <laughs> soliciting sports betting. But, but yeah. it shows... It the the percent the chance of winning the Stanley Cup and making it to the Stanley Cup final of and who's got the higher chance and the two highest teams are Tampa and San Jose and then I think it's Boston and Toronto and that makes sense. Um, but do they can they be beaten? Oh, absolutely, mm. absolutely. Um, and I forget who Tampa would have in the first round this postseason. Um, but and I'm, I believe it's either going to be Carolina or maybe Pittsburgh. So there is a chance. That oh, wow. Yeah, they could get knocked down. Be I'd, I'd want Carolina. Yeah. Not Pittsburgh. Well, that's yeah. kind of Pittsburgh like still scares me. Right. But yeah. I think it. So the kid, but baby. I think, I think Carolina hates them. Yeah. I think Carolina is higher <laughs> yeah. than Pittsburgh. I think it's um, Columbus, Pittsburgh, and then uh, Montreal fighting for the two wild card spots. So love to beat Claude too. Love to beat him. Well, uh, did we beat him? No, we didn't beat him last Canadian year. Not last year, no. the year before. Year before. Yeah. But I was I was shocked that I'm shocked that they're even making a run for the playoffs right now. Last thing I want to mention too, and he doesn't get enough credit, and he totally deserves it, is the job that Bruce Cassidy has done on the Bruins. Ever since Julian was fired, this team has been completely better, completely different team. So much better. I mean, much I, more offensive oriented, but balancing it better. And it can you can tell that the players like to play for him too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Kind of like how the whole core thing with Farrell, Farrell, yeah. to, Farrell and, and Claude, 
I look at both of those as, okay, they're one championship guys. But I don't think the players really like to play for those guys. I'd give Claude a little bit more uh, credit for what he did because I think Farrell just kind of went like... I don't give him any credit. Really? For I that give one Tim year? Thomas all the credit for Oh, that's for that. true. He played his uh, tail off really for later. Tim Thomas. Like Claude Julian is here was the, with the Bruins for as long as he was, I personally yeah. think, because of Thomas. What yeah. do you think? As much as I hate to say it, yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> you don't agree with me? <laughs> yeah, sure. As much as I hate to, I mean, I'm not a big ending. Tim Thomas fan, but uh, yeah. No, just, he had I've a never historic been a performance. I, I but, don't know what it is. I've just, I hate that style of hockey that he has. But uh, yeah, bo- it's boring hockey. Because of his style of hockey, his coaching style of hockey, we lost so many players that would be so much better Kessel? in this system. The thing is, no, say no, not, no. <laughs> but say, yeah. Um, if we didn't get rid of Kessel, we you wouldn't have gone and Sagan. Sagan. Yeah, that's true. No, actually, the uh, the Kessel deal was pretty great because you got Sagan, but then you just got that was the weirdest thing to me when they got rid of him after his third year. Yeah, yeah. yeah we have well, a history of getting rid of players. So. Yep. There, Joe there's, Thornton. There's there was a little yeah. story He's still behind. Still playing. Yeah, which yeah. is nuts. There was a little story behind the Sagan trade, but we won't get into that. Oh, no. well, a party boy or whatever. Well, why not? I mean, we've already thrown everything yeah, else everything, out. Yeah. No, I'm only no, I'm not. <laughs> Anybody, anything else in the NHL? Anything else? Uh, <laughs> yeah, playoffs start April uh, 10th. Oh, April cool. 10th. But April that is 10th. the best thing I will say about hockey as an uh, as a kind of amateur, not amateur, but just like a, not an avid fan per se, but the playoffs is amazing to watch because it's a whole different thing. It's and so it's we wide talked open. we talked about it last year too. We did before or the yeah. couple shows. It's wide. That. It's like the NFL. It's wide open. It, like seating almost doesn't matter. No, no. And you get to watch possibly seven games every single round. Yeah. Well, the the NBA long. too. Now it used to be good for, transition. Real good transition. Because now I have a question for you. Sure. I might have an answer. How are the you Celtics feel, going to make the playoffs? How do you <laughs> feel after three no. and one on a West Coast trip? I feel pretty good about it, but I think the Golden State uh, one you take with a grain of salt because I think uh, they didn't have Clay Thompson. Although you know they played well. Was Draymond and Clay? No, Draymond was in. It was Clay. Yeah, Clay was, was, out. In a, okay. was out. Okay. But I mean, they ran away with it. But I also think I don't think Golden State had the effort in it, and maybe they gave up early or whatever. But I don't think they had the same effort in it that you had like maybe with the Sacramento or the Clipper game. Bold but, statement alert. Okay. Before you add in, sure, sure. Golden State isn't winning the championship this year. Yeah, I, someone had mentioned that Portland. I think Charles Barkley or someone said that Portland is going to make the finals. But I found that ridiculous. Oh, I don't listen to Charles. Charles Barkley. <laughs> oh, I love listening to him. But Guy I can't even swing a golf club. Like, yeah. come on, let's, he, let's he, be real. He has here. a great line about vegetarianism doesn't exist. It was great. That don't that don't exist. That's he's, my Charles he's Barkley. Be, terrible. Be, yeah, him terrible. and Jose Canseco may be two of the biggest. Oh, Canseco is amazing. His whole like. Did you hear about what he was doing? The with, alien with A- stuff. The alien stuff. But did you hear about the whole A Rod? A Rod and Jen- Jennifer Lopez are now engaged. No, and no, everything. no. Well, he's claiming that his ex-wife and A Rod were together when this whole engagement and everything was. Oh, well, maybe. He is a lunatic. But it's well, so great. Every, lunatic. The steroids it's went to criminal. his head. The steroids it's went to his head. How bad he is. Why does he have a podcast? Because he should. Oh, his Twitter <laughs> is really a cesspool. Should. Oh, it's but that I'll go swimming in it every day. Oh, <laughs> it's great. I, 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 I drowned in it. I'm <laughs> done. I, I can't. A buddy of mine had posted about like, oh, by the way, just so you <laughs> you know, it was like it was insane. Yeah. Kurt I'm Schilling like, is another one who's absolutely insane. Yeah, he's been. He's on Planet Zippy. But that he's not but he's not Ed. Like Jose Canseco is like a it's almost like a teddy bear, like crazy. Like Kurt Schilling's more like, ugh, this is an old man. Yeah, like, he's a crazed lunatic. Yeah, he's the guy who has power and is doing yeah. something. So that's what what do he do now? Oh, he's just he's but, got an opinion about everything. He's uh, of course. A, they, they, they never shut their mouth. Yeah, he well. hasn't blocked you yet? <laughs> oh no, yeah. We'll try weird. to be friends. Try to I could see that being a, a weird partnership. <laughs> But despite his uh, his weird leanings, but uh, oh, back, so the NBA, yeah, back Bold to the statement. Celtics. Yeah, you think <laughs> you, you think the so Golden State three and Warriors one? Won't make I it. have to say, can no. go fly out this way and fly out that way. I don't know where you're pointing at, but well, out this <laughs> way, over, <laughs> just anywhere. I just didn't know. Well, we started right here and go right, right here, here, and you move it over there. It's a very Bugs Bunny esque <laughs> type of like misdirection. Well, I'm Elmer Fudd, so yeah. Oh boy. Oh no. I, so you, you, well, you, you don't. You can. Habits. It doesn't matter to you, right? That's what you're saying, pretty much. No, it doesn't matter. No, that's fine. No, that's no, understandable. No. This team is toxic to me. <laughs> what team? I don't know if they're toxic. I don't toxic. know what team you're talking about. They don't oh, have that's toxic, yeah. What team? I, yeah, like, I said oh, last, I like I see last show, I don't I know. Get it, I don't watch. I don't pay attention to them yeah. right now. <laughs> no, I sure. You call me crazy, but he has, crazy, he, yeah. he has a hot, hot take. Brad Stevens is on thin ice. I think that's fair. I mean, okay. I think that's a fair. I mean, who else are you going to put in there? Doc. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> I put Rick Carlisle uh, in there. What's up, Doc? That's yeah. why I said if we're it. getting in. It's not bad. We're laying uh, it in there. What's up, Doc? If, hey, I'd love uh, Mel Blanc to be resurrected. Uh, from the no. Um, but no, I, who, I mean, yeah, I agree. I think he's on thin ice. They're not listening I, to him. I and, don't And I got to say, it. one of the things that you got to respect for when a coach is there, kind of like how Cora and Cassidy do yeah, it, yeah, yeah. is there's a mutual respect in wanting to play for these people. Kyrie. Well, yeah, he, that's where it starts. He is so, like, what's the word? I don't know. What's the word? I'm trying to think of somebody that says one Doo-doo thing. Give us, give us the facts. No, I'm trying to give the facts. Yeah, yeah. He's, um. Oh, he says one thing, does the other? He's good one day and then bad the other. Manic depressant? It's a mood. It's a mood. Not a manic depressant. He's bipolar. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Tom. One day he's, oh, this stinks. I'm out of here. I hate this team. Get out of my face. Oh, Mm -hmm. we're fine. We had a wonderful trip on the plane. We all kumbaya on the plane and we're all doing awesome. You're using kumbaya as a verb. I don't even know. I'm just trying to say we had like uh, a they had a they had a uh, a religious moment sure, on the plane. Sure, sure, sure. Here we make up words and use them Good in different God. parts of speech. It's not, yeah. Uh, yeah. I just don't like the players on this team. These young <laughs> kids think that they own the block. Kyrie hey, man. comes in. There's just no like. Just tell them to get off your lawn and finish the. Oh, they're far finish, off my yeah. lawn right now. Uh, I I didn't even like they were playing 10:30 on Monday night yeah, against sure, the Clippers. Sure. Didn't watch. Saturday no, I can night understand. against. It's a Monday night at ten, like against just, the Clippers. I, the, the Golden State could care less. The Bruins just came off a big win. I don't care to watch I, but basketball. But they just didn't care. Oh, I, I, I'm sorry to say it because I basketball? want to. Uh, what, yeah. And what is have, this orange and ball? And then you have the, the most round. horrendous announcing teams going on. Whoa, whoa! Kyle Back Draper the and Scal oh, can go. Why? Fl- why? Why do you I hate those? I can't stand them. Oh my God! There's so much anger in you, for no reason, for no apparent reason. Kyle Draper's great. He's a great. He is like oh. a muppet to me. He's just so weird. He's just like a. He's got his bright eyed lips guy. right on everybody's butt. Oh, you mean just as a fan? Yeah. Um, yeah. And granted, I think Tommy is that. like that too. Yeah, sure. But sure. when you put Mike Gorman in, Mr. Professional, and you don't think it, Scal's professional? Oh, Scal drives me absolutely oh, wow. crazy. He's great. No, he senses. He does a lot of stuff that like the Tony Romo esque, where he'll sense out some stuff, and not to blow up. Uh, Rumble spot because everyone did that crazily when right. you know uh, the Kansas City game. That's like, right. Oh, everyone yeah. was verbally you know. Oh, fillet- look at this play! Here everyone it comes. was you know verbally filleting him when he was you know doing all this you know calling. Oh, they're gonna throw it to Gronk. Oh, you mean the one guy who's on this <laughs> right. one like safety who we can yeah. easily climb over? <laughs> uh, but no, it's I don't know. I love Draper. I love uh, Scalabrini. I'm not just being a homer, but I just like seeing something different too. Yeah. I mean, I love Gorman. Gorman's great. Mm-hmm. I actually. Uh, did a short horror movie with his daughter. It was great. We didn't know it was his daughter. Oh, it was oh, it was fantastic. Like, really cool. And we found out it was like, oh, my dad's my corner. Like, oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> and we're just kind of like, oh. we, we were too I'm excited. Not, yeah. How about we meet him? Uh, we were, yeah, we turned into like Kermit the Frog. See, but, I like I like Tommy because of the the humor he adds to. It. He doesn't really. Billy really like, has a bit of. I, I, I haven't <laughs> warmed up to it yet. I mean, I'm uh, the same. Right, yeah. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a traditionalist. I right, like yeah. tradition. I, I like Don Orsillo in the booth, not O'Brien. I like... Did you that's, lo- that's an easy... Uh, that's I a- like Doc Emmerich if they're going to be an NBC game with uh, Milbury together. No, no, oh, no. I don't as like far as Mike, NHL? Did you, do you like, do you like no, Mike Tirico no. now broadcasting hockey? I don't like Mike Milbury. At all. You don't like Milbury? Mike Tirico I, does I, hockey? Mike Tirico does hockey now. Does he broadcasted do the Sunday game. Oh, and I had to tweet, with glasses, right? And I had to yeah. tweet out to NBC and said, I can't hear you people. Oh, why? Like, what? 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 I got the Tony scores. It's like, enunciate your words. Enunciate. 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 There we go. See, that's... Yeah, no, I'm not a big Mike Milbury fan. Why? Because he tries way too hard to be non... Uh, non-biased with the Bruins when he's doing the Bruins games. And it just, <laughs> and it just sounds like he's... See, like, I like having a little bit of that. The best call he's, he's, was the he's, Vegas game when they had Dave Gosher in the... In the that was tremendous. No, do they have... They seem Gosher to have, used to be the broadcaster for uh, the, the radio side. Yeah. Because, and now he's the team broadcaster for the, for the Golden Knights. Oh, weird. It's kind of bizarre because it do seems you have like... Broadcast? No. Oh, it's, a lot of national hockey, great. like NBC hockey, tends to have at least one Bruin guy. Yeah. Or like you just heard point. the horn. That's Jack Edwards going by. Oh, you know what? He he will announce a Speaking wedding. Speaking of which, no. I love Jack. 
Uh, See, so why do some people love and hate him? That's what I can't oh, understand. Oh, why are the stars? Why is there? Is he, is he the people that love uh, Jack well, Edwards or they hate him? Because he's just so energetic, but like. But he's, he's straightforward, he's, though. He's almost like a Tony Romo, but like. <laughs> yeah, way no, above. He's, he's got high energy, but he, I think he's very straightforward, and he'll call something out. I, like, I do too. That's from what I understand. My, what my heard, yeah. he, he has been a little bit too homerish though this no, year. No, I will no. say. My, my favorite Jack Edwards moments are the ones where uh, Andy Brickley has to turn around and correct them. Yes, <laughs> those are fun. Well, that's like the same Mike Gorman and Tommy Heinsohn. Mike Gorman like either stays quiet or just like, all right, moving on to the next. Like, yeah, you can, you can kind of hear Andy Brickley like, oh my god, get me out of this <laughs> the <laughs> um, I do One love. of the best calls of the season so far with Edwards was with the Hartford, the Wales blubber. Did oh, you yeah. hear that one? Yeah, yeah. That was amazing. Oh, yeah. oh, and yeah. they take the blubber out of the whale or something <laughs> yeah, like that. Yeah, that's exactly yeah. what it was. Yeah. That's one of my favorite. Yeah. That yeah. was really good. Do, my, yeah. favorite, my, good favorite Jack Edwards, really, my favorite Jack really Edwards great. quote is uh, the, uh, the time that uh, Chara did the spin, the spin yeah. move and scored on the back end. He's like, oh, and Chara spins like a ballerina and puts it in the net. Oh, that'd be a scary ballerina. On our Celtics front, <laughs> gentlemen. Ever. Yeah. But as far as yeah, basketball let's get goes, back to basketball again. How what? do you feel about the Celtics? Why are you talking? Wow, jeez. Okay, this is Google Gaga hour. <laughs> what he's but. talking like this because he doesn't feel great about the Celtics. No, right no, now. understandably. And um, he's gonna go on a no, rant no, in about no, two no, minutes no, no, after no, you no. make yeah, your comment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. no, it doesn't matter. No, I, uh, hey, I'm with you in a lot of ways. I think uh, they're very manic, depressive. Uh, they're very bipolar as a team. They can be very hot, very cold. I think it was nice to see some like the Sacramento game. I think was. Was a good game for them. The LA game yes. was a good. Uh, the Laker game was a good game. Yes, it was. Uh, Clippers, they didn't have Tatum in it. I forgot all about. It. He wasn't in it. Uh, Jalen Brown had an okay game. He started it. He had like twenty something points. But that also was a weird. Like it seemed like the Clippers had an answer for everything, and like the Seeds just didn't have a defense going for them. I, I will say the Clippers they played were out of their mind. Yeah, they played no, out of their mind. No, it, it, shooting wise, wasn't like fifty something percent. Was, they were and shooting. And they don't shoot a lot of threes. No, and they just everything rotating fell. the ball. Yeah, yeah. It just, I, I will say the same on that. And even the Celtics kept it. Fairly close at time. Like, it ran away at the end of the third, I believe. No. Beginning of the fourth, it kind of ran away. Because they still were down by 11 at one point in the fourth. And they had kind of a chance. But The statement game for me was the Kings. It was winning yeah, right so. after the Golden State. I agree. It was I a agree. back-to-back. And it was also a chance to see how Gordon Hayward would do. And if you remember those... That was those, fun. Yeah. Those two games They're right there. Shot. Gordon had a great game against Golden State. And he another did. very solid back-to-back performance with the Kings. Gordon Hayward is, is, is your difference. If yeah. Gordon Hayward's going to play yep. the way he did on that West Coast trip, then the Celtics definitely have a chance in the playoffs. So, no, Tom, yeah. I am not going negative. Wow, so no, he shove did. it. He did. He went the other way. That's very nice. Very but sweet. But if here Gordon yeah. Hayward yeah, no. turtles mm-hmm. and plays yeah, no, below his... Below what we all feel that he can do. Because he's shown us now that he's getting healthy, mm-hmm. his knee's getting better to where it is, then it's a different, it's a game changer. Yeah, I think it's a confidence thing with him too, like making contact and going up for the shot while he gets hit. Your as glue of this whole him. thing is Al Horford. Your glue. I think you're right. I think it's, I think Marcus Smart He's and Al your Horford. Leader. He's the leader. That's why I think those two guys. Yep. Because they see the court, and yep. I think Horford can control offensively a lot and more. And I will say, one of the players who, yes, he's well, had, a, he had a very good still. first yeah, half, does, yeah. but he's not had a very good second half. And Marcus the player Smart. that I think is one of the causes of a lot of the turmoil that comes together with some stuff is Marcus Morris. Yeah. Yeah. I think Marcus Morris, after the season is done, is gone. He might be. I forget if they have kind of want him to be gone. You want him to be gone? I kind of do. Yeah. I, yeah. Oddly enough, I, I mean, I like Marcus. I think he, has, he did have a really great, I think you're right, he had a great first half. Yep. I think he, his uh, performance has kind of been some lackluster. Well, maybe that has something to do with the, the uh, attitude of the team. Very no, good, I, very well uh, be. I think because he's called think the, right. he's called the team out he's on a few occasions, and he's yeah. been there, and he's he, he's a firebrand of sorts. Like for a while, yeah. he could back it up, but now yeah. really it's can't. Tough. Just yeah. shut up. When you win, you know? and when you're playing well, it's easier to it talk. Is. Yeah, kind of like how Kyrie is. Like if Kyrie, I don't feel like the, I feel, feel like the past couple weeks with Kyrie has been better. I also think he doesn't. It's, it, not, he's he's not like in the spotlight yet. No, again. but I also think like and I've said this before, like months ago, like he's not necessarily a leader. And I don't think he necessarily, maybe in his head he kind of wants to be, but I don't think he does. Is that a problem, though, that he's not a leader? I think it, it, it's a problem for the media if they want him to be a leader. The, I, that's a great statement I right think, there. But if the team... Based on uh, facts, fact taken. No, no, but if he... That's but, a great statement. If the team... Well, especially if, when playing in Boston, because... Would you, you let know, the man speak? Go ahead. Well, no, no. I, <laughs> no, but you're right. If especially being in Boston. In Boston every, everybody was so magnified. happy yeah. to have Kyrie on the team. 
that that's who the media is going to go to. It doesn't matter if you get Gordon Hayward. It doesn't matter if Al Horford's like leading the team on the court. Yeah, it doesn't yeah, yeah. matter if Marcus Smart's having the best season of his career. The fans want to see Kyrie, sure, sure. and that's what the media is going to go towards. And I think, especially yeah, in that's, Boston, that's part of it. And I think uh, some of that doesn't matter when they say like, "Oh, Kyrie's not blah 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 blah." It's right. like, well, yeah, Kyrie, like he's a utility guy. He's a very glorified. Not I shouldn't say glorified. He's not, he's uh, the highest utility guy you can have. Like an Anthony Davis might be a leader on the court. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, uh, Steph Curry, I would say, is one of the, one of those guys who can be a leader too. I mean, Kyrie can be too by example, uh, by on the court and just doing what he does. But I even think like. I, Gordon Hayward, when he's playing well, when Marcus Smart, it, they're their best when Marcus Smart can get the ball or Horford can get the ball at the top of the key and they can just see it. And even Gordon Hayward, when they run offense through him, mm -hmm. sometimes he, he can check down and see everything that's going on. And Kyrie can do that pretty well too. He's actually, he's, um, he's made me a believer in some ways of passing it underneath because I used to think he was a horrible passer in the paint. But he's, he's done a lot better. He's using his teammates better. I don't think yeah, he likes. I don't think he likes pinpoint. being in the spotlight. I don't think he no. likes the attention. I don't think and he, I think which that's is why that ironic. repeatedly this year too. Yeah, and and I think ironic, that's I think. why the whole attitude of the team is the way it is right now, and the performance mm -hmm. of the team it's like is. This. Yeah. Yeah. There's no. I think it matters like with. But he has been in the spotlight lately in like the last week. I haven't really heard. I mean, I don't pay attention to them, but like I haven't heard anything. I haven't heard anything from it either. And when so. they win, I think it, it creates a better buffer for that sort of thing where they don't have to lean on The them. last thing we want to mention here before we wrap it up is the Red Sox. The Red Sox, they're uh -huh. in spring training mode. Yeah. Yes, they just came off their World Series, folks. It, it, it's amazing. It's Craig Kimbrough it, coming back. Nor the can Jason hopes. The question is, <laughs> Jason, I'm yeah. sorry to say it. Oh, is he? But you need a little stability for that bullpen right oh, now. And no. as much as Jason's going to probably throw something at me right now, <laughs> I unfortunately have to say that, you know what, a one- or two-year deal may actually be some help to the bullpen because I know spring training is spring training, but yeah. you can't discount the fact that last year in spring training, the Red Sox were kicking butt right out of the start of the gate. They're on eight losses, seven, eight losses now in a row, and they look lost. But isn't it starting they can't pitching? Find, pitching has been very shaky. The bullpen has been atrocious in spring, atrocious. I think that has to do with something, and I think it has to do with them not really knowing what role they're going to be pitching out of this year. I don't know. The offense has been shaky. There's been two studs on the Major League roster we at least know. Uh, Devers has had a great spring. No, okay. Blake Swihart's having another great really. spring. Yeah. What's spring training? And <laughs> the other prospect's name to know a little bit more of is Michael Chavis. Um, he's had a really good spring, what, too. Uh, what position? Third base, oh. trying to see if he can play a little bit more all, all uh, over the field. Yeah, yeah. Like a Brock um, Holt. Yeah. But I got to say, yeah. you know, I didn't get anything thrown at me yet, but if we did cut to black, maybe we did. I don't know. But don't Kimbrell, know. It, the, the longer this goes on, sure. the longer this drama plays out with the whole Kimbrell thing, the more and more it's telling me that, you know what, he is going to come back. I don't think and I would he's use... not coming back at his five-year, no, $100 no, million no deal. That, but... It's going to be like a one-year, $20 would million. You, would you really, I mean, if I were to phrase all that again, I would not use stability and Kimbrell in the same sentence. And you can't, as far as... but at least he has a track record. Maybe that's the word sure, to say it. Sure, with a lack of stability. So that's I'm just going to ask it. Jason, do you think, would you give the ball to Matt Barnes right now to be your closer? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Wait, wait, hold on. What you heard was a, kind of like a, uh, like a, a very shrugged, like, uh, yep. from the studio. Oh man, I can't wait Frazier? for the bat, Matt no. Barnes rants. <laughs> uh, that that's why it's it's. Or Frazier, Brian Frazier. Is that Frazier? Ra Frazier. Brian Brazier. Uh, uh, Frazier. All right. Hembry, you gonna give the ball to him? You gotta remember uh -huh. that the bullpen from last year, when we were in the playoffs, got the job solidly done by Kelly. Yep. Sadly, Matt Barnes, Brazier. <laughs> But they were in roles that weren't high leverage. That was high leverage stuff went to Porcillo and Avaldi and Sale yeah. and Price. Well, they were in some pretty um, crazy spots. They but... won kind of despite the bullpen. You know, your, your guys that were out there in a way. No, the bullpen held its ground in the playoffs. Right. Like, there were some shaky times when they, they got through it. But um, I don't know. Kimbrough, I think Kimbrough was the only blight on that bullpen throughout that playoff. It was, and I will totally agree on that. Uh, and it's, I was watching and again. Like, what was it, game five? No, The four? Astro one with the diving catch? No, oh, that one was awesome. No, it was an uh, AL uh, Diaz. 
was uh, against the Yankees, the game four in yeah. uh, New York. Like that le ninth inning, which like they're up, what was it? They have like four one or something. And yep. Yeah, and then get, the Yankees started coming and then four to three. Yeah, that unbelievable play Amazing. from his knees and also, to get the out. And yeah, he almost he, his knees buckled. He, yeah. he screwed himself up. Yeah, but and also Stephen uh, or um, the World Series MVP. Steven, oh, oh, Pierce. Pierce. Pierce, Steven Pierce, Pierce. With the amazing scoop. Amazing scoop and, and, and uh, lounge, yeah, yeah. or yeah. lunge. Yeah. Uh, yeah, who was lounging? Remember, the, lounge. remember <laughs> folks, the, the only player that's really not with the Red Sox that's not returning is Joe Kelly. Really? That's it. Everybody else is pretty much back. That's not bad. Which is staggering. Yeah. So this should be another really solid year for the Sox. I got a high expectation what do you think? for them. Before, I want to repeat. When's the I season? Repeat. When's the season start? Uh, March 28th against Seattle. Oh, well, that's not Very early. Is it in Seattle? Yes, yeah, so we're on a 10-game road trip to start the season. We'll come back to Fenway April 11th, I believe. Oh, man. Oh, opening so up against the Yankees. Uh, hopefully the Bruins won't be playing then. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Before oh, yeah, we wrap up be. our show, we're just be, about done. Be a day like game one, for the yeah. I want to thank Phil and Tom for being here. We really thank covered you. everything. We did Amazing job. Yeah, we had a great did. show. And, and I you know what? You know what? He wasn't too profound. No, it wasn't. That. It was, like, it it was, was a great fantastic. show. Yeah. But I will say the Celtics, I think, they have to get to the, the fourth or third. I don't know if they'll be. They have 14 games left, and they're two games away. So we'll see. We'll see. Yeah. We'll see. You may on the computer or on YouTube or Instagram or something see a new feature that we're doing with Face the Facts, and that's something called our Sports Minute. If you go to our page at Sports Zone 101, uh, it's on our Facebook page, once again, like I said. Instagram you will see too. every week or two, we're doing these little segments that are incorporating Face the Facts into our, our programs at Sports Zone 101. So we hope you get a chance to follow those. They're a lot of fun to do. And they're to help you to stay informed about what's going on here in our lovely land of sports. So you may see Tom or Phil appear on a couple of those coming up soon. We hope you enjoy them. For Nick Face, we'll see you next time here on another episode of Face the Facts. We hope you have another great week, and we'll see you soon. See you later.